this video, we're going to discuss the default line wrapping behavior within Emacs and the different ways in which you can customize it. So what exactly is a line? Logically, a line is just a point until the end of line sequence, commonly abbreviated to EOL, is reached. The typical EOL sequence can vary between operating systems, but the user generally can insert it at any time by pressing return on their keyboard. The visible line is whatever can be seen within the space reserved for a line within Emacs. Sometimes this is also called the screen line. So, if we take this line as an example, the logical line ends at the point where the return was pressed. The visible line has plenty of space left for more text. It is all of the space available visibly within Emacs for a line. But what happens when the logical line you write is too long to fit on a single visible line on the screen? By default, if you write a large amount of text which cannot be displayed on a single visible line, then Emacs will wrap the logical line onto the next visible line and display an indicator that it has done so in the Windows fringes. If you have a graphical Emacs session open, the indicators will take the form of arrows, and if you are using a terminal Emacs session, then they will appear as backslashes. When you have a single logical line, which is wrapped around multiple visual lines, the normal Emacs commands may not work as you'd expect. The commands to go up and down a line, using either the arrow keys or Ctrl P and Ctrl N, act on the visible line, but the majority of other Emacs commands act on the logical line. For example, the command to go to the beginning and end of the line, using the home and end keys, or Ctrl A and Ctrl E, moves the point to the beginning and end of the logical line rather than the visual one. What if you do not want this behavior? and you want to use these commands so that they work on the visual line rather than the logical one. Well, here is where visual line mode comes in. Visual line mode is an Emacs minor mode, which when activated, allows the usual key bindings to operate on visual lines rather than logical lines. To activate visual line mode, type meta x visual dash line dash mode and then hit enter. You can immediately see the difference. Firstly, the arrows in the window fringes are gone. This is the default behavior with visual line mode. Later in the video, we will cover how you can customize this to have the arrows still be there. Secondly, in the mode line, the word wrap has appeared to indicate visual line mode is active. Also, you can see that the wrapping is more intelligent as words are no longer split out of character in the middle, but whole words are just wrapped instead. To see this clearly, we can turn visual line mode off and watch the effect it has. The command to turn visual line mode off is the same as the command to turn it on, now words are wrapped in the middle, rather than intelligently at the end. Let's activate visual line mode again. When we issue the commands to go to the beginning and end of the line, the point now moves to the beginning and end of the visual line, rather than the logical one. The command to kill the whole line, Ctrl K, also conveniently operates on the visual line rather than the logical. Another thing that you should know about visual line mode is that when you turn it on, it is active per buffer only. If you want to activate it for all Emacs buffers, use the command meta x global dash visual dash line dash mode instead of the normal meta x visual dash line dash mode. By default, visual line mode removes the indication that a line has been wrapped from the Windows fringes when using a graphical Emacs session. Usually, I don't want visual line mode activated by default, but when it is turned on, I do want the line wrapping indication to be there. This is so that it is very clear to me that even though the lines may appear separate visually, I'm still operating on a single logical line. In order to have the line wrapping indication turn on whilst using visual line mode, you need to set a variable value. Let's open our Emacs customization file and include the relevant Emacs lisp to configure visual line mode. We use set Q to set the variable visual line fringe indicators so that the left curly arrow is placed in the left fringe and the right curly arrow is placed in the right. We can save close and reopen Emacs so that our changes are loaded. Now, when we enter visual line mode, the indicators in the window fringes are still there. Another way in which you may want to display long lines is to truncate them. An example of where this is especially useful is when you're looking at a log file and you just want to see the first part of each line. In the log file, each logical line is an entry. Suppose I was scrolling down and I wanted to get to a specific time and date. The default behavior of Emacs is to wrap the long lines. Visual line mode doesn't help either. Instead, here, truncating the lines makes sense. In this case, run the command meta x toggle truncate lines, and the lines will be truncated rather than wrapped. You can see here that this makes it much easier for us when it comes to navigating around the buffer. If you move the point to part of the line which is not part of the visible line, 
Emacs will adjust the window. Just like Visual Line Mode, you can toggle this truncation behavior on and off as needed by issuing the command again. That's it. In this video, we explored the different options available to you when deciding how to display logical lines which are too long to fit on a single Emacs visual line. When it's necessary, you can use visual line mode and also choose to truncate lines to make interaction with buffers that contain long lines easier. If you want to see more helpful tips and tricks on Emacs, be sure to subscribe and check out some of the other videos available on my channel.